Sequoia is making me start. Welcome, guys, to the first episode of Black People Like Paramore, a show about unexpected non-Black things that Black people really get into. And yeah, I'm excited to be on this episode of Sequoia because this is our first podcast together. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll start by introducing <laughs> myself. I'm Jordan Coley. I'm a music critic and pop culture journalist based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm from New Haven, Connecticut originally. You can have you may have seen my work on such esteemed websites as GQ, <laughs> Let's go. The New Yorker, Tell or them. Goat.com. <laughs> okay. Goat.com, uh, where the goats belong. Where, where the about goats it? belong, okay? So I really <laughs> sip, sip my tea, let you guys look that Sip it, bit. come on, sip the tea. Give mm-hmm. them a little second, let that yeah. resonate. Yeah, no, and um, uh, I'm a pop culture lover, as Sequoia knows, and as you guys will come to see. And so it's really exciting to talk about have the show, the space to talk about some of my favorite things, which are white things, non non black things that black people really get into. <laughs> um, you know. So yeah, that's me. Sequoia. Jordan loves white shit. And I am Sequoia. I do a whole bunch of shit. Um yeah, that's the best that I can explain it. I never even know how to explain what I do when people ask. I'm like, shit, uh, uh, a lot of stuff on the internet. So that's what I do. You can find me She's on outside, Instagram. Okay. I'm outside. That's all you need to know. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Sequoia B. Holmes. Um, yeah. And thank you, Jordan, for being on the episode with me or of for co hosting in general with me. Welcome to Black yeah, People Love Paramore. So. On this first episode, we have a little bit of a setup that we're going to be following, going to be doing mm-hmm. a little bit of a lot, okay? Welcome through it. So we're going to spend the first couple minutes talking about our very black or very white obsessions, okay? And the segment mm-hmm. is called In My Defense. Mm-hmm. Jordan, I hope you brought some heat because I have something. Oh, you know. You know, I have two things and one of them I'm a little too embarrassed to say, so I think I'm going to default to the um, oh, no, less embarrassing is... one. Oh, no, 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 we're going to start low and we'll build, we'll okay, build. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, you go first. What's your, what's your In My Defense? What you got? Okay, okay. This is, uh, I only brought one and I really felt like there's only, I only needed to bring one. Yeah, no, please. We only do one. Y'all only get one. A powerful um, cockazoid infinity stone of a uh, of a uh, interest. Powerful cock. That's interesting. Okay. Cockazoid. Yes. cock-a-zoid. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> as in people who descend from the Caucasus Mountains. As in people sure. who are not of African lineage. Sure, um, Jordan. Uh huh. Um, the so I uh, in my defense for this week is um it's probably. The most, the most uh, near and dear non-black thing that uh, that I'm into, and it's um the uh, uh the incredible lauded early two thousands um, indie band Vampire Weekend. Are you okay, familiar? okay, yes, yeah, familiar Vampire Weekend. We could take that. We could take yeah. that. All right, so some scene setting. The year is two thousand nine. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm fourteen years old. Um, I need to remember the movie. Uh, so uh, I, I of course, like everyone else, had MTV, watched MTV. This is like the dying years of MTV, right? Like 08, yes. 09. Like yes. you're still kind of watching in the morning before school, but like you really don't care. Like yes. shit, like, it's the same people on the challenge every year. And it's like yes. real world is like starting to get stale. <laughs> it's still the same people on the challenge every year. Every year. Um, but uh, <laughs> but like they were still playing music videos in the morning. I remember yeah. this distinctly. Mm-hmm. Um, and... There was a, oh, here it is. And there was a, a music video for the song um, A-Punk that a Vampire Weekend's like first single, which many people mm-hmm. remember as being the song that always plays when you plug your your iPod in the car because oh, it's the first God. song in the library. Because it starts with the A? <laughs> yeah, do you remember that? Yes, um, I definitely remember that. And so I was like 13, 14 years old uh, and I saw this video and I was like, these white guys playing guitars and like dancing and like a fake underwater thing. And like the song was catchy and I was like, yeah, I'm into this. I'm like, the out of the maker. And so that slapped, that slap added it to my iPod Nano expeditiously. Expeditiously, immediately. I was like, we're, we're, we're buying this. We no, bought yeah, it. We're going to purchase. We're purchasing we're, it. We purchased it. And then, mm-hmm. um, 
And then I went on and purchased Oxford Comma, which was the second song they had, which like already was like, I should have known what I was getting into, right? The second single is like a grammatical term. It's named after a grammatical term. You should have known um, you was getting some real white, deep so white I, territory. Right. I, did, I should have felt myself <laughs> sinking in, right? You're sinking. Into, into the mayonnaise. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> but but I was nevertheless I persisted and so by 2009 I had those two songs I had them on heavy rotation on the iPod um, but I didn't really know any of their other music I wasn't the you know the serious music critic I am now you know right. I wasn't doing album re listens and so right. I watched I go to my friend uh, Jamie's house shout out Jamie DiNicola uh, hey. my my uh, eighth grade ninth grade you know high school friend I went to his house. We watched, it was like one day after school, maybe Friday night, and like we like had nothing to do with we losers. And we're like, <laughs> we'll watch, uh, we, we watched for, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yes, the, yes. The, you know, classic, film. early, classic film, cinema. Chef's um, Kiss, cinema. <laughs> late 2000s, you know, Jason Segel vehicle, starring Absolutely. Kristen Bell, M- Mila Kunis, Russell Brand, some top tier white people in this film. Absolutely. Um, um, and so I watched this movie and then besides enjoying the cinematic art that it is, I was taken <laughs> by the music and I was like, this music sounds familiar. And then I realized it was all Vampire Weekend was the soundtrack. Um, there it is. And then I, that was the catalyst I needed to like dive into the catalog. So next thing you know, I'm at Hamden Miller Library in Hamden, Connecticut, and I'm listening to Horde Chatter. You did Vampire. not go to the library trying to find the, Vampire Weekend. Okay, okay, let me let me a break. I didn't go to the library. I was there for some other thing. You know. Okay, okay, um, okay. I grew up with not a lot of money. We probably were printing something. You know, we didn't have a printer at home. Um, Fair. But, but I was you best. No, I was on YouTube's. You know, on YouTube. <laughs> Why you was there? Listening to Vampire Weekend, and then uh, this song Horchata came, uh, like what came out around that time. It was like two thousand nine, um, and and they were prepping the release of their. Uh, oh, it was late two thousand nine because it was almost twenty ten. They were prepping the release of their their al- second album Contra, and so when I tell you, I was like, it was like, it was like how people waited for. Um, for like Biggie to drop, you know, like <laughs> not you waiting for Vampire Weekend like a Biggie yeah. drop. I'm like, done. Big, like it was, I was like waiting for Life After Death. It was I'm truly done. like I was so excited. <laughs> um, I went in I, that that summer, the previous summer, I had worked my first job as like a baseball umpire at like the local little league baseball shit. You have lived many lives, Jordan. <laughs> you know, I was out here. I was out here. I was making paper. I'm Jamaican. You know, we had you know. We can, we can, no, I was calling. I was waiting for it. <laughs> um, so I had, I had some pocket money and I was like, uh, and I went to Best Buy, rather my mom and my sister drove me to Best Buy because I didn't have my driver's license. And, um, and uh, I bought, I purchased this physical seat, Vampire Weekend Contra CD. Um, and mm-hmm. we rolled that thing into the ground in my mom's uh Volvo S40, like we played oh, it all the time. That is it so was, precious. Yeah, and it was like my favorite thing. And like the, and the, yeah, so it was like, they, they were like weirdly like this big, you know, uh, early high school musical interest, you know, moment for yeah. me. And like the first band I was into. And the coda to this story is many years later, like you, Sequoia, I, I, ha- I get a job working on the internet for a living okay. and I worked at this publication called The Ringer. And uh, the guy, the social media person there got us all, even the interns, I was an intern at the time, they like got us all verified on Twitter. Uh-huh. And like, you know, being 22 and you're just like, oh, this is the peak. Uh, this means I, yourself. I, I, I did just hand it. Like, this, that's like, for, for a 22 year old, <laughs> that means that's like your um, dinner with Jay-Z. I was like, oh yeah, I did it. I made it. I did it. I'm done. What else? I'm done. It. And then I, I, was, I was sick with the power because like I realized that you could like <laughs> hit people up and like they, and there's a special verified, you know, Yes, tab. yes. Um, and so I, I d- randomly, like a couple years ago, I just I just tweeted at Ezra Koenig, the lead, lead singer of Vampire Weekend. I was like, yo, at Ezra, um, we need to talk. Hit me. Just like out of the blue. Shut I don't know. Up. This I is think such I, a you tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just had my, my, my cup of tea. I was like, like you know, zooting. <laughs> You got a little drink, right? Sip. You got a little and so taste. I was, like, so I was like just feeling like, you know, raw, like drunk with the power of having the blue check. And so I I just, and then he DM'd me. He was like, yo, what's shut up? Shut up, shut and, up. And Sequoia, this is when I worked at BuzzFeed, actually, because I, I remember that Sequoia and I met working at BuzzFeed. And he was like, he was like, oh, how's it going? What's life? How's life as a social media? What was my title? Coordinator, again? like a social media coordinator yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was like, you know, same shit, different day, bro. You know how it is. 
<laughs> we were just chopping it up randomly on, on this thing. I, he was just like, what's up? And I was like, I just was like, you know, what, listen to Vampire Weekend and like, hoping you're doing well, man. And he was like, he's like, thanks, man. I'm in the studio working on the album, blah, blah, blah. And then this was, uh, now I know that they were working, he was working on Father of the Bride, the latest album. Oh um, my God. But so we have these like three separate DM interactions where, where like I kind of chat with him, he kind of responds, and he stops responding because he's a he's a busy, famous person doing it. And he don't making, know you, right? right. And he, he just was kind of having fun, just shooting the shit, like you know, passing the time. Um, right. But he's a nice dude. He, I sent him, I once sent him a song that I made on SoundCloud. And he was like, "This is this is terrifying." Um, Shut uh, up! You see how you're making songs on SoundCloud? Sometimes, like back in the two years ago when I was like uh, depressed in LA. Which oh, you, you gonna make our theme song? You gonna make our theme music? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> wow directly to my agent um uh oh yeah but anyway long story short the one of the, the, the final interactions we had on dm he was like you mentioned like you know if you ever want to come to a show let me know and i was like yeah bet of course and then i moved to new york he was like hey we're playing msg this was 2019 if i almost said last year but you know last year is the you know the forgotten shut year. up right um, yeah, um right. 2019 he was like uh he was like yo i'm playing msg if you want to come uh let me know and I was like, yeah, of course. And then he put me on the list with, and I brought my friend Erica and I went. Uh, we had a great time. I was sitting behind like Mark Ronson. Her shut. was next to me. Uh, uh, it was, it was so crazy. And like, I, I like got to meet him. I was in this like little like Madison Square Garden little like back room where they had a little after party thing with like Lucas Hedges and all these random shut people. The um, fuck. Um, you're it lying. Was, I swear yeah. to God, and I and I met him, and um, I like went up to him at, at the thing because I was like nervous. And I was like, he just like you know, I'm sure he put a lot of people as plus one or something. Right, right. Um, and I was like, hey, Ezra, I just want to introduce myself. I want to say thank you for like buying me show. He looks at me, he's like, Ooh. oh, who is this? Who he's is like, this? And then, he's at, then, he, then he says, after like maybe a three second beat, he's like, Timothy to I'm done. <laughs> not that, not that being your Twitter name. <laughs> Did he invite you because he thought that's who you actually were? He thought you were no, 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 no. no, okay. First of all, Sequoia, I'm a black person. I'm a Negroid male. <laughs> but is that your picture? Is your picture your and black picture, Negroid my, male self? My picture is my black face. Uh, so he knew it was me. He knew he knew I was a black person. But he, he thought he remembered me by my Twitter name, which was really funny. That's um, so funny. Yeah, so you got the blue was... check. You got celebrities remember you by your Twitter name. You just were drunk with power. You thought you mm. was really popping, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and that was, that's the Vampire Weekend arc with me. So I, I'll stand by Vampire Weekend, you know? You know what? That's a great reason to stand by. That was a roller coaster of a story. <laughs> I did not see that <laughs> ending coming at all. <laughs> wow, see, now my little shit about to dwarf in comparison. What type of shit is this? I ain't got nothing like no, that. No, this is... Uh, this is you a, know what? That's, I'm going to be silent the, other, the rest of these episodes. I got nothing Shut else. up. Shut yeah. up. That's it. That's the peak. That's the peak <laughs> of what you had. You know what? Now I'm about to have to pull the nuclear option and tell y'all what, <laughs> what fucking real niggardly ass shit I... <laughs> I really... Am I really about to admit this in public because I've never done it before? Hey, this Ooh, is the space. Okay. Okay. My in my defense. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now hear me out. I don't know Maybe. how you as a Jamaican man feels about this, okay? But me uh, as as an African American <laughs> young woman, <laughs> I <laughs> descendant of slaves, I <laughs> like chitlins, okay? And that's not that's not you know, it's not my fault. My ancestors may do what they had. They gave uh-huh. us chitlins. It is a wonderful delicacy. I don't know if you've ever indulged in the delicacy, Jordan. If you have not, please oh, get this you some is, chitlins. This is your in my defense. It's chitlins. Oh wow. <laughs> I thought we it's were on like a whole sidebar. I thought we were like, no, no, no. My in my defense is that I like chitlins, wow. and you know, people try to shame me for it. People be like, "How you eat that? It's pig intestines." I know what the fuck it is. I know <laughs> what it is, <laughs> and I like it anyways. Y'all Wait, eat McDonald's. True. You we went to we went to the whole other end of the spectrum. I went to Vampire Weekend. You went to chitlins. I that's... went to chitlins. You know what I mean? Just something that's just like unforgivably nigga. Oh, you okay, know? So, okay, so explain it. I I don't think I really had like you know chitlins. Uh, like is it? <laughs> And so, like you, you like you when you when you get it, it's like it's not like the chip. I've seen like the pork rinds chips. That's not no, 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 that's not even close to that. No, okay. no, no. So you get chitlins in this pack, this like compact square uh, package, and mm. it's just. It's just like the longest string of pig intestines. Oh. That- <laughs> it's 
like the longest string of pig intestines that exists, right? And it, sometimes it has a little bit of shit left over in it. So you have to... <laughs> So you have to clean it. You have to clean it really well. You know, you have to soak it in water for some hours, like a whole day up there. You're gonna make chitlins. You have to soak it for hours. It's like a whole thing. Um, you get a little glass of wine, you soak them, you clean them, you move them to the other side of the sink. Um, it's just very reminiscent of a not so great American travesty, but we got chitlins out of it. So Oh my god. And you by <laughs> you, uh, you are you referring to the institution of slavery? Is that what you? Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Wait, wait, back up. That's so wild. Do you gotta clean the shit out of it? <laughs> you literally have to clean the shit. Oh out of it. my god! You have to and clean so sh- your mom would make this for you. Um, my mom did make chitlins every now and again, and for the first half of my life, I refused to eat them. They smell like sh- they smell like shit. Like they mm. literally smell like shit. They I mean, smell I can imagine. Bad. Right, it has poop in it. Right, yeah. Until you clean it out, obviously. But yeah. Anyways, um, it smells like shit. Your mom cooks in the house. I'm like, I don't even want to be in the house. This shit is nasty as fuck. I'm not putting that in my mouth. And one day, my mom was like, "Just try it." I put it. I, I put it to my tongue in uh-huh. Jordan. <laughs> Revolutionized. Revolutionized. Yeah. Life is changed. I don't know if you saw this video on Twitter of this girl trying ranch for the first time. This like <laughs> white British girl trying ranch for the first time. She has like an accent. Whatever. Yeah. She takes the little cucumber, she dips it in, and you see her taste it, and she you can just see she's having like an orgasmic experience. Like she's euphoria. like, oh, this is great. She's like, this is the shit. That was me. Did they, not, they the don't have the ranch in the in the UK? I guess not. I don't wow. know what they have in the UK. This is also you you advancing the ranch agenda. I feel like we, <laughs> now that you forced us to talk about it, Sequoia's got this weird kink for ranch. And, and what about managed, it? She manages to work it into every conversation. And what um, about it? No, nothing about it. I just wanted to get out in the open so we, the elephant, the, the ranch soaked elephant is not in the room. And I'd eat him too if he was ranch soaked. So. <laughs> Wait. Okay. So, I'm I'm still curious about this chitlins thing. So, um, <laughs> you I knew you. So you're from Long Beach. I don't the, pe- the people the audience. I'm from, from Long, Long Beach, California. Beach. Yes, I am from Long Beach, California. Yes. And you're east side. And you're east side Long Beach. And your your mom is uh her she grew up in Long Beach. My mom grew up in Chicago, and in my Chicago. dad grew up in Alabama. In Alabama, the the mm-hmm. classic trajectory. The classic trajectory. You know what I mean? Right. The Southern migration, Midwestern right. migration over to uh right. California. That's why niggas in LA sound like they're from like Mississippi. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, right? The accent yeah. is like some it's, like weird mesh of like it's southern and just other shit. Yeah, I've been my cousin. My cousin Tyler is really into like West Coast rap, and he's always sending me West Coast rap. Uh, did you listen to Rumble ever? You heard Rum- Rumble? No. He's just like I think he's from Compton, but he uh, he has a song where like I just the accent made me think of this. He has a song where the opening line is. Um, <laughs> Are you willing to die for those Christians? <laughs> <laughs> not for those Christians, not some Zach Fox shit. It's giving very Zach Fox. Yeah, and he's like, he said, like, spin a band on a burner and die with it. Like the the questioning Shut in his up. voice. I'm well, gonna I'm I'm look it up. I'm yeah, definitely gonna have I'll, to I'll look it up. Rumble. Please. Okay, Please, wow. yes. So you're so this, this chitlins is like a generational thing. It's like back in back from Alabama. They they took that from Alabama. It's not. See, my dad does not eat chitlins. My dad never ate chitlins. He was not mm. into it. He was like that shit is disgusting. I'm not doing it. Um, but mm. my mom mm. in Chicago, the chitlins was was a thing. So What's that popping? whole side of the family popping? eats chitlins, grease popping. You know, chitlins in the stomach, delicious. Mm-hmm. Intestines in the intestines. You you love to see it. Got you. And so, yeah. do you? Have, so that was a that was a pretty crazy one. Do you have a one from the other end of the spectrum? So we got like some white shit, super black. Mm. To now, mm. I don't, mm. I don't even fuck with white shit. Like, mm. except for you know the topics of this podcast, I fuck with a lot of those <laughs> things. But uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, so cool. you made this podcast. So cool. you literally invited me here. <laughs> literally, like, I don't even like white shit. Um, <laughs> No, I am. I don't. I, you know what? I do. I have. A, I have a lot of them actually. But I'm okay. gonna circle back. I'm gonna circle back. I'm gonna say. Okay, we'll circle back. Okay, that was yeah. a really good one in, your, in my defense because uh, yeah. I I got a whole like like cultural history there because I didn't. I'm so know. glad. I'm so glad that you learned Chitlins. about chitlins. And I'm sure you're gonna get you some now. I'm sure you're really interested in trying chitlins, and no. it's probably something you're gonna. Oh, yeah, you're no. not gonna run. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you're I'm not gonna run out and grab some chitlins. You're uh, saying no, no, oh. actually. 
I oh, know that's fine. it up on Uber Eats right now. Chillin's. Oh, you're not trying to go look at your nearest chitlin spot and grab mm-hmm. you some chill. Also, no. that's another thing. You can't really get chitlins from a restaurant because you don't know how well they clean them. So right. it's, risky. it's a delicacy. It's a delicacy. You don't really know what they did to them chitlins, how long they soaked them, if they really took the time to make sure there was no shit in them. You could just be consuming shit for all you know. And I'm not about that life personally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not about the, the scat play, whatever Trey Songs likes. And- I don't like it. It's, it's not, not for me. Songs. <laughs> it's not for me. So, <laughs> have you ever had chillings that were not made by your mom? Like is your mom's. I have. Going? I have. The first chillings I tried were not made by my mom. They were made at a restaurant. My mom ordered them. And she was like, "Just try it," and I was like, mm. "Fine." And it was fucking outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Your they're really rubbery they're like super rubbery like hey, stop rubber it. okay stop it <laughs> <laughs> you're done you're done I'm okay done. you don't okay okay, okay. i'm done <laughs> well yes um so this has been a great in my defense thank you mm-hmm. for your uh very eclipsing story about vampire weekend making me pull a nuclear option and admit yeah. that i like chitlins in public no, for the first time so i'm glad we got there okay since we're finished talking about black ass chitlins we'll move into <laughs> other non-black things this time that black people really like this segment is called black people love and this episode we're talking about the namesake of the podcast Mm -hmm. paramore we've come to pay homage we have uh, come to pay homage to Haley williams we love you it's you you're you're the the one Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the of Haley Williams. okay so i pulled up a little bit of information about paramore just in case people mm-hmm. don't, are not familiar paramore is an all-white band from franklin tennessee they were formed in 2004 did you know paramore was formed in 2004 uh that makes sense she's one of those people who's been around forever and was like still like 29 you know that's what i'm saying i'm like she looks like she could have been born in 2004 right. she looks like billy eilish yo stop william that's eilish. another thing that's what yes yeah, so william billy eilish. eilish wishes billy eilish wishes hold right, on hold on, hold on don't do Bill- don't do William. Don't do William. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. We'll leave William for another episode. But mm-hmm. um, yes, 2004. I'm like, 2004. I also did a little bit of research and realized that Haley Williams is the only person who has been in the band the entire time. All the other wow. members have shifted. 100% of the no other member has been in Paramore the entire time. Talk about a carry then. You know, she's been Talk doing about it. it. Carrying it. Team on her back. Period. Do you have right. a favorite Paramore song? To be honest, I I'm like you know I stick to the mainstream. You know I, I love I love me a good. You know I don't even know the names. I don't even know Ooh, the names. Misery I business. Like, that one's called misery business. Okay, they just touched me. I oh but okay, we should we gotta contextualize this because I feel like you had a ser- serious pop punk moment. Okay, not? okay. I'll give context since Jordan is trying to put my business out there. Like that. <laughs> I had a very serious, a very serious pop punk, some might say emo moment, mm-hmm. um, circa 2005 to 2009 ish, about wow. that four years. Okay, so while I was preparing to put my polo on and my bow shoes, I was in the <laughs> house right. game. You were in the pit with the, the checkered vans. You were uh, the, I had the check. I had the checkered vans. I had the fingerless glove. Mm. Um, I, had, I wore ties. Um, I did the bangs in front of the eye. I did the whole oh, thing. Man. Yeah, I'm gonna recreate those looks soon. Also, I decided cool. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a little recreation of those Hell looks because yeah. it's fun. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I had a little pop punk moment. I liked Green Day a lot, Paramore, My Chemical mm-hmm. Romance, Panic at the Disco, Fall Out Boy, all the standard mm-hmm. pop punk bands of the time i was in middle school at the time it spanned like all of middle school and then i mm. went to a predominantly black high school where that shit was about to fly the same like it had been <laughs> doing in middle school uh so you know i had to switch the cadence up no oh, she had to put away the bands, <laughs> put the bands. bands. oh right. my god jordan in high school there was this group of niggas just <laughs> niggas right they would go around with a whistle it was like it was like 10 of them uh-huh. they would go around with a whistle <laughs> oh my god i can't believe they did this they would go around with a whistle and just blow it at girls who were dressed crazy so this <laughs> what so this, girl I know, so this girl i know 
Michelle was wearing a jersey dress yeah. <laughs> one day to school. Like jersey dresses were kind of cute at the time. What else oh was like a God. thing? She had this a group, Pierce jersey dress on. Oh my God. This group of niggas surrounds her. She's in uh, the middle of the circle. They're blowing the whistle and just roasting her shit for the next like this 20 is, straight minutes. That's terrifying. That's the it most beautiful so thing I've ever heard. <laughs> That's character and development. That's growth. Right. That's how that's you get wild. a little character, right? So yeah. Um. After that, I that's had to like a high school experience out of a movie. That's like, <laughs> like the group of like you know like bullies. You know the sharks. That's amazing. I'm telling you, and only if they had come to terms with the fact that they too liked Paramore, you know what I mean? We probably could have been friends because as right. we know now, all niggas like Paramore. Right. It's like such a consistent thing. Oh, wait, so did it ever come for you or did you like retreat? Nah, they never, I, I retreated. I saw retreated. immediately what it was like. I said, yeah. oh, this is what we're doing? Bad. Right. This no, you won't catch me. This is time wrong. Yeah. You won't catch me. So, <laughs> okay. had to um, switch out of the vans, you know what I mean? But that, that was also an interesting moment. I especially imagine for a person growing up in like Southern California, because because uh, um like uh, the new boys happened and like the jerk yes. thing happened. Yes, and that, that was the that exact was, time. That was like a weird like niggas taking from pop punk kind of aesthetic. Hell thing. yeah, yes yeah. it was. They had the same skinny jeans, the same belts, mm-hmm. like the Vans. Remember the song Vans? Yeah, of course. By, but, like, by the, the pack. pack? Yeah, the yes, pack. yes, yeah. yes. You know, you're so right. They really were taken from that. Um, but yes, niggas love Paramore, and it's just like the most consistent thing. And I have a couple theories as to why I okay. think niggas love okay. Paramore. Okay, break it down. So okay, older black people, right? They don't, they don't, they don't fuck with rock like that. At least not our generation of rock. They fuck with rock because like, as you know, black people created rock, black people mm-hmm. created every Check genre. Yeah. But like our generation of rock, like my, uh, my chemical romance, panic at the disco. They wasn't fucking with that. They felt like it was devil shit. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> like, why you got this devil shit playing in my, have you, you see this nigga? Like, no, yeah, turn yeah, him yeah, off. Yeah. Why is he got eyeliner on? You know, like, why is he got eyeliner? Why, you know, <laughs> no. Why is his hair jet black? No, mm-hmm. all that type mm-hmm. of shit. Now, Paramore started off as a Christian rock band. Did you know that? I'm vaguely aware. I knew uh-huh. there was some God shit in the mix. Uh-huh, some God shit thrown in the mix, yeah. right? They yeah. have big God shit energy, right? They're from, yes. they're from the South, too. So they're from know. Tennessee. Yeah. That's all that you really need to know about them. But yes, they have Christian rock energy, I feel like. Mm-hmm. They're first, they have like a song called Hallelujah. Their first album was like kind of, had a good Christian amount wow. to it, a good Christian anchor to it. And even now, if you listen to some stuff, they use choirs and songs like they have a good anchor to them. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that kind of that was like a little bit more of a safety for black people in general. It's like, oh, it's like, yeah, no, no, no. I'm a, I'm a little bit familiar with this. Like, I get it. I get it. And then on top of that, you have Haley Williams, who actually has vocals. And if it's one thing black people like is vocals. They don't give a fuck who it's coming from. You can mm-hmm. see that with Ariana Grande. Black people like vocals. They don't care what you right. look like. Right, she's a and, great singer. Well, yeah, no, she's a really good singer. Like she sings really well. She carries a note, and she can't, She sounds a little bit soulful. She's not like guttural, <laughs> like uh, the other bands might be. Sometimes she like has a soulfulness comes from her diaphragm. Has correct breathing cadence when she's singing, and black mm. people appreciate that. Okay, and, yes, go ahead. In addition to that. She's a white girl who looks like a white girl who's not trying to be a black girl. And we also love that. You know, and I think that last point is so potent because it's like in in an era where blackness and black people are under siege, where where the where the and I know you 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 might have a lingering affection for this person, but the William the William eyelashes (laughs) of the world are, are being allowed to roam and prosper. Dressing like Suge Knight, you know, <laughs> dress, <laughs> dressing like Bun B. I think, I think <laughs> it is really refreshing and um and really beautiful to see uh, an emblem of whiteness, an example of whiteness that is comfortable in its own whiteness and like, and, like and thrives in its own whiteness. Doesn't feel the need to like to like to like take from other things to like to to like make something that they they think is worth displaying in the world. And like yeah, Haley Williams has always held it down. For her, uh, carry the torch for her, um, her Caucasoid sisters. I, I say, Period. I've been saying, I said, I tweeted the other day, peak white womanness, uh, like culturally speaking, uh, was, uh, Cheryl Crow's seminal 1994 hit, All I Wanna Do. <laughs> oh, that was a peak. <laughs> the peak was before we were born. <laughs> I, that's, that song is so good, Cheryl Crow. 
you know, an emblem of white ladyhood. Um, <laughs> But uh, but I, I'm like I now feel the need to revise because like thinking about Haley Williams and all that she's done for the all culture, all she's done for the white culture, for the white culture, she's been known for her whites. And isn't <laughs> Haley Williams also responsible for um, Bruno Mars in a way? Isn't that 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 airplanes in night skies? Like that's B O B, isn't it? Oh B O B. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay, I'm mixing up airplanes. Yeah, Haley Williams and B O B. Yeah, but I feel like she does have a song with Bruno Mars. Am I tripping or does? Yeah. She- Louis, I'm, I'm hitting the Google. Yeah, check that out. In. Check that out. But to be fair, she is responsible for Bob, and we didn't ask for him either. <laughs> so that might be him. that might be to her detriment. We didn't yeah. ask for that. Regardless, she you know she's done so much, and like she's like stayed firmly her great, beautiful, amazing, talented white self. Um, wonderful white. She is a mm-hmm. wonderful white. Right. An exceptional white. An exceptional. A, you know, a, a literal dying breed. She's yeah. not trying to encroach on my territory. Her mm-hmm. lips normal. Her hips normal. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I appreciate it, girl. Stay over there. You look cute. You look yeah. cute. Why don't yeah. y'all do that? Do that. And, and it's true. I think I think the thing you, the other point you brought up about like her being a great singer is so crucial. Because I think a part of uh, the thing of like, these uh, many, so, so many white artists like reaching, you know, is and, and like reaching both and like trying to like steal little bits of blackness or non white, you know, like or like non whiteness of any kind just to like spice themselves up is also like <laughs> it's also the cover for a lack of talent, you know. Yeah, it really and, is, yes. And, like, I think I think people get on, like, uh, not to not to name names, but to name names, Lana Del Rey. Like, I think people, people get on her. Because, you know, she was she was trying to be like a chola for so long. And it was like, I would too if I was from Greenwich and I couldn't sing. You know? Wow, I, mean? I forgot that she was doing that, that she went through that phase. Mm-hmm. Wow. She's and like, what she if I was Latina? Is. And no, then, girl. Right. You're just yeah. not, though. Okay. Yeah. You're you're just a, a dark haired white girl. Let that rock. Why can't let, you just be white? Let, What's the problem? Let that rock. You know, let that rock. And that, that's worked out for them for so many years. You think they would feel more confident in it. But um, here's the Haley Williams. And that's cool that she's Christian, too. And like that, that doesn't rub me the wrong way. Because I feel like, right. I feel like, you know, who, uh, who else I learned uh, recently was, um, do you remember Switchfoot? They had that song. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I remember Switchfoot. <laughs> <laughs> the passion for Swiss one just jumped out of you. Yeah, okay? got, you got so excited. I was really, <laughs> you're hiding way more than you're letting on. Is this the crazy part? We're gonna feel it. But Jordan We're gonna feel it. We're gonna feel it. Thank you. I don't feel back a little bit. I'm just, you know, it's that's fine. so funny. But yeah, Swiss one. I think I also learned was a. Um, was a like a, a kind of religious group. You know, like Hell that one yeah. of their big songs. Was what like, was their song? What was that one song that was really big for them? Yeah. It's not the reason, right? The reason is Hooba Stank. Uh, <laughs> I don't know nothing about Hooba Stank. <laughs> uh, Switchman has Dare You to Move, but that's not the one I'm thinking dare of. Dare You to Move. Oh my God. That was that's, my shit. I dare you to move. to move. A bop. A slap. Quite a bop. A tro- a s- I'm about to listen to that shit. Wow. <laughs> Spotify going to have to catch on. I need more of that, Spotify. Come on. Right. Yeah, seriously. Like, it never happened. Happen. Like, it never happened. Meant to live. Shit. Meant to live. That's the I don't one. know if I know that one. I'm not we sure. Meant to live was so much more. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I absolutely know that one. Yeah, that one wow. is so good. Wow. Okay, I'm on the Wikipedia page. It says, lyrically, Meant to Live was inspired by T.S. Eliot's poem, The Hollow Men. Singer-songwriter John Foreman has said, maybe the kid in the song the kid in the song is me, hoping that I meant for more than arguments and failed attempts to fly. Something deep inside me yearns for the beautiful, the true. I want more than what I've been sold. I want to live life. Ooh, so the depth, the depth in the, in the substance is there as mm, well as what you're saying. Rich, a rich texture. Art. Art yeah. is just very textured. It's like uh, when you go to a wine tasting and, and you suck it in and, and you let the aromas hit your tongue. That's mm-hmm. what it's giving me right yeah, now. Yeah, this is giving, this is a 2004. It's uh, San Diego, California. Um, uh-huh. It's, it's yeah. got notes of Christianity. Uh-huh. Probably a little bit of notes of racism in there notes, as well. <laughs> a slight That's probably. Of race. Notes, right. of bl- notes of blonde highlights. You know, right, uh, right, right. <laughs> a, couple, a couple of bleach blonde highlights, a little bit of spiky hair in there. Yeah. yeah. A little yeah. goatee action. Yo, I'll side look, note. I'm, I'm, speaking, mm-hmm. speaking of spiky hair and blonde hair, mm-hmm. did you see Clay Aiken o- online talking shit about Clay um, Aiken? Megan? 
Clay Clay Aiken as in American Idol's Clay Aiken. You know exactly who Clay Aiken is. Hell yeah, American Idol's Clay Aiken. Talk shit about American Ma- Meghan Markle. Megan, are you talking shit about Meg- Megan Markle? Yeah. What saying? Saying what? <laughs> <laughs> saying what? It's saying, it's saying, it's saying what? Clay? What could you possibly have to say, what Clay? You right? You have to say Clay. <laughs> he, he was saying that he like oh. Poor her boohoo, like victimhood is the biggest number one cause of fame in the United States, and and that like she's lying about the shit that she experienced in the royal family and just all type shit. I'm like, nigga, shut the wow. hell up, Clayton. What? Clayton on twenty twenty one. I haven't been keeping tabs. Forgive me, I haven't been keeping tabs on Clay Aiken since like oh. two thousand three. But um, <laughs> but he 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 just gives me notes of like that strain of like white gay man who's like would speak at CPAC. You know, would speak at like a conservative. You know, a hundred percent. That's but very Clay Aiken. He's like, I found out he's from Tennessee too. Him yeah. and Paramore. Oh. oh, see, there's two ways about it. There's two ways you can go. There's two ways you can go. Okay. There's two ways you can go, and the, <laughs> the odds are slim. So shout out to Haley Williams for making it out. We applaud you. Yeah, because Clayton gives me like, you know, they the the liberals <laughs> they don't want us to be happy. <laughs> they right. don't want us to love God. They just want their Meghan Markle and the prison the Prince Henry and their Canada and their socialism. <laughs> we I, don't have to like black people. We really don't. We, okay? we don't. <laughs> when when God brought me to my beautiful White husband in 2005. <laughs> I was thankful. Period. Thankful. And uh, come on, Clay. Way, I should have beat Ruben Studdard. Did he win or did he not win? I have no idea what I, Clay Aiken. I don't remember. I don't remember at all. <laughs> I don't think Ruben Studdard won though. So yeah, so maybe. I'm, I'm sorry for 2004. Ruben Studdard. Oh, oh, undeniably, just a moment, a hit, a classic. <laughs> we loved it. We're coming. We're coming up on do not. Geez, this is scary. We're coming up on twenty years. Of, I'm sorry for 2004. <laughs> You're probably like, how does that make any sense though? Because how am I not twenty years? Like, it's not making. It's not tracking. It's not tracking. You for are. Me. You're just younger than you. Were, you remember at that point? Oh my god. Oh my god. Now I'm having an existential crisis about turning thirty. Anyways. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that we've done a good job of debunking why niggas. Not you, 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 explain you, why niggas yeah, like you brought three strong points um and mm-hmm. i i tend to i tend to do um and as as you as a pop pub expert you know as someone who lives as someone who's, who served her time I, I'm, <laughs> I'm like inclined to take your you know take your wisdom but um yeah, yeah no Haley williams is definitely strong and i think i think it's a perfect jumping off point for this podcast because black people have so much flavor so much taste so much so much um uh discernment Seasoning? So much discernment. Mm-hmm. We, we, I feel like we be able to spot the things, the like the beautiful little things, the the growth, the, the like you know little flowers in the concrete, and and uh, and Haley Williams and Paramore is the flower in the concrete of whiteness. You know, she's sprouting. Wow, up, despite a the rose eyes. in Harlem, a rose, like a rose in like Tennessee, a rose in Chatt- Chattanooga. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's Haley Williams. A rose in Chattanooga. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, and the cement city of Chattanooga rose cement, sprung up from the nothing. Rose of yeah, the cement, you know, on the from the the concrete, uh, the lifeless concrete of the American South, you know, using only uh, Jesus's light, Jesus's and light, and a no. couple power chords, you know, and in like an, some some really well executed vocal runs, she did it. She did um, that. She did yeah. that. We got to give it to her. She did we that. We got to give it to her. But yeah, and yeah, she really did carry Paramore on her back, saying that she's the only consistent band member in that damn group, and everybody mm-hmm. else has changed in and out. It's really, so really, black people like Haley Williams. It's not even so much Paramore. It's Haley. It's how black Williams. people feel. It's Haley. Yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, Haley is Paramore, you know? Yeah, and, so and one we're, of the we're all paramours. <laughs> and we're and all y'all. It's, it isn't everybody. Paramour. It's a great episode, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I'm, yeah, Thank I'm, you so I'm, much just, for yeah, being on with me. Yeah. Um, and I'm really bad at transitions, y'all. So bear with me because we'll, I don't we're, transition. This well. is a work in progress, you know. We're building. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, that wraps up this episode of Black People Love Paramore. I am Sequoia. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Sequoia B. Holmes. I do be making TikToks, y'all. I be out here ticking and talking like the young kids. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I got I to gotta tap in. And, I, of course, I'm Jordan Coley. You can find me on Twitter as well and find my writing on, on the internet. Uh, yeah, thank you for listening, guys. Really appreciate it.
Yeah, we'll see and, you in like two weeks, probably. And, and do as a service to black people to this show, <laughs> go out there and try chitlins and let me know how they taste. Cause I'm not trying to know this nasty. You know what? As a service to me, if you do nothing else, okay, with the rest of this year, try some chitlins because you won't regret it. You'll love me forever. I promise. It'll be great. Yeah. I'll send you some, Jordan. Don't worry about it. All right. Okay. All right. Bye, y'all. See ya.